Hi, and welcome to another weekly webinar with Sarah Flack, the Education Coordinator for the Child Advocacy Center of the Finger Lakes. In a previous webinar, I talked about recognizing signs of anxiety and depression in children. Now that we're moving into the, the short days of the winter months, I just wanna to touch on seasonal affective disorder so that you can have a better understanding of what it is and how it may affect your children, coworkers, friends, or family. Seasonal affective disorders, commonly referred to as SAD, as its acronym, is the type of depression that's related to changes in seasons. It typically begins about the same time every year for an individual. Most people with SAD um, tend to have symptoms that start in fall and continue into the winter months. That includes sapping your energy and making you feel moody. However, some people who experience symptoms of SAD also that causes depression in the spring or early summer. Some symptoms include depression, loss of interest in activities you typically enjoyed, having low energy, having problems with sleeping, experiencing changes in your appetite or weight, feeling sluggish or agitated, having difficulty concentrating, feeling hopeless, worthless, or guilty, and sometimes having frequent thoughts of death or suicide. There are some differences between whether you're experiencing uh, symptoms of SAD during fall and winter or spring and summer. So just wanna to touch on those quickly. Symptoms specific to winter onset SAD um, are sometimes called winter depression, may include oversleeping, uh, the appetite changes typically um, would include a craving for foods that are high in carbohydrates, which results in weight gain. These people may also be experiencing tiredness or low energy. Conversely, people who experience SAD in the spring and summer months tend to have what is sometimes called summer depression, which can include trouble sleeping or insomnia, a poor appetite resulting in weight loss, and tend to be experiencing some agitation or anxiety. In some people with bipolar disorder, spring and summer can bring on symptoms of mania or a less intense form of mania, like hypomania, and fall and winter can be a time of depression. Some of the causes of seasonal affective disorder remain unknown, but some may come in, into play, including your circadian rhythm, which is also known as your biological clock, the reduced level of sunlight in fall and winter may cause winter onset sad. This decrease in sunlight may disrupt your body's internal clock and lead to feelings of depression. So um, this could be like you're sitting at home and it's not even dinner time yet. Maybe it's only 4.30, quarter to five, and you see how dark it is outside. Typically, when we notice that it's dark outside, our body starts to think that it's time for bed. Um, so this is, could be part of why oversleeping is a concern, as well as the sunrise due to the days being so short, um, having a later sun, sunrise in the morning. You may tend to see that people are sleeping many more hours during the winter months. Um, some other <clears throat> factors that may come into play include serotonin and melatonin levels, a drop in serotonin which is a, a brain chemical that affects mood, might play a role in SAD. Reduced sunlight can cause a drop in serotonin that may trigger depression. And the change in season can also disrupt the balance of the body's levels of melatonin, which play a role in sleep patterns and mood.
Seasonal affective disorder is diagnosed more often in women than in men. And that occurs more frequently in younger adults than in older adults. There are some other risk factors that may increase your risk of seasonal affective disorder. These include things like your family history, having major depression or bipolar disorder, because symptoms of depression may worsen seasonally if you have one of these conditions, and also living far from the equator. SAD appears to be more common among people who live far north or south of the equator. This may be due to the decreased sunlight during the winter and longer days during the summer months. Like any other mental health disorder, seasonal affective disorder can have some pretty significant complications. Um, these can include social withdrawal, school or work problems, substance abuse, other mental health disorders such as anxiety or eating disorders, and could possibly lead to suicidal thoughts or behavior. Treatment can help prevent complications, especially if SAD is diagnosed and treated before symptoms get bad. So diagnosing um, is typically through an evaluation. It can sometimes be difficult for a doctor or mental health professional to diagnose seasonal affective disorder because other types of depression or other mental health conditions can cause similar symptoms. Um, generally, the evaluation will be completed by a doctor or mental health professional. It can include things like a physical exam, lab tests to rule out um, any issues with like a thyroid or other bodily functions, a psychological evaluation to discuss your symptoms, thoughts, feelings, and behavior patterns, and also a DSM-5, which your mental health professional may use the criteria for seasonal depressive episodes listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. Um, and once they have determined whether or not your symptoms are being brought solely on because of seasonal affective disorder, they can look at some possible treatments. Uh, some of these treatments may include uh, light therapy, in light therapy, or phototherapy. You sit a few feet from a special light box so that you're exposed to bright light within the first hour of waking up each day. Light therapy is meant to mimic natural outdoor light, and it um, appears that it can cause a change in brain chemicals linked to mood. With one of the first treatments for fall onset, SAD, and it generally has been shown to start working in a few days to a few weeks and causes very few side effects. However, research on light therapy is limited um, and before you purchase any <clears throat> light box, you should talk with <clears throat> talk with your doctor about what one would be best for you and familiarize yourself with the features and options. Um, medication may be recommended. Some people with SAD benefit from an antidepressant treatment, especially if symptoms are severe. Um, your doctor may recommend starting treatment with an antidepressant before your symptoms typically begin each year. If you have been shown to experience SAD um, annually, keep in mind that it may take several weeks to notice full benefits from an antidepressant. This is why your doctor may consider starting you before the onset of, of um, your new symptoms. Psychotherapy, or also called talk therapy, is another option to treat SAD. A type of psychotherapy known as cognitive behavioral therapy can help um, in ways like, it, uh, can I help identify and change negative thoughts and behaviors? You can learn healthy ways to cope, especially with reducing avoidance behavior and scheduling activities, and learn how to manage stress. Um, another form of a traditional treatment might be a mind-body connection um, technique. 
There's a variety of those, including relaxation techniques like yoga or Tai Chi, meditation, guided imagery, music, or art therapy. There are also some alternative or home remedies that have been successful for some people treating their symptoms of seasonal affective disorder. Um, some of those may be as simple as making changes to your environment to make it more sunny or bright. So things like opening the blinds, trimming back tree branches that might block uh, sunlight or skylights in your home, or sitting closer to bright windows while at home or in your office. Getting outside more to take walks, um, eating lunch at a park, or simply just sitting outside on a bench, um, relaxing. Even on cold or cloudy days, outdoor light can help, especially if you spend some time outside within two hours of getting up in the morning. And also exercising regularly, which can help relieve stress and anxiety, um, both of which can cause sad symptoms. And being more fit can help you feel better about yourself too, which can also lift your mood. Alternative medications um, like certain herbal remedies or supplements and mind-body techniques are sometimes used to try to relieve depression symptoms, though it's not clear how effective these treatments are for seasonal affective disorder. It's also important to keep in mind that herbal remedies and dietary supplements aren't monitored by the Food and Drug Administration the same way that medications are, so you can't always be certain of what you're getting and whether it's safe or not. And the, you also run the risk of them interfering with prescription medications or causing dangerous interactions, so you want to be sure that you talk with your doctor or pharmacist before taking any additional supplements. The other things that we want to focus on are coping and support. So things like sticking to your treatment plan, discussing um, what you're taking with your doctor and attending therapy appointments when they're scheduled, taking care of yourself. So being sure to get enough sleep so that you're feeling rested, but being careful not to get too much rest, um, participating in exercise, engaging in other forms of physical activity, um, making healthy choices for meals and snacks, and trying to avoid turning to any kind of alcohol or recreational drug for relief. You also want to be sure to practice stress management, so learning techniques to manage your stress better. Make time to socialize. So when you're feeling down, it can be hard to be social. Make an effort to connect with people you enjoy being around. They can offer support, a shoulder to cry on, or shared laughter to give you a little boost. And lastly, you can consider taking a trip. If possible, take winter vacations in sunny, warm locations if you have seasonal affective disorder, or to a cooler location if you have summer SAD. So if you are concerned for yourself or for your child, you want to start by seeing your family doctor or a mental health professional, such as a psychiatrist or psychologist. Um, some information about what to expect at an appointment would be, um, you know, to kind of make a list about what you're noticing. So your symptoms or your child's symptoms, the depression patterns, so things like when it started, what makes it better or worse. If you have any other mental or physical health problems that should be discussed and are taking medications, any major stresses or life changes you've had. And also if you're considering any herbs or supplements, as well as any questions you may have for your doctor. And what you can expect from your doctor is quite a few questions. Um, so they're going to want to know things like, what are your symptoms? When did you first begin having symptoms? Have your symptoms been continuous or occasional? How do your symptoms impact your daily activities? Is there anything that seems to improve your symptoms or worsen your symptoms? Do you have any other physical or mental health conditions or concerns? If you're taking any medication, supplements, or herbal remedies, whether or not you use alcohol or recreational drugs, 
And if any of your blood relatives have SAD or uh, another mental health condition. So those are just things to keep in mind when preparing for an initial appointment with your primary care provider. If you were to have a mental health emergency, I want to make sure that I provide you with the national hotline, which is 1-800-662-HELP or 1-800-662-4357. As always, if you have any other questions or are looking for more resources, you can certainly reach me by email at sarah, S-A-R-A, at cacfingerlakes.org, or by calling our Child Advocacy Center's main number at 585-394-2573.